Now, just to refresh your memory, right? Uh, if z equals 1 minus i, which of the following statements is true? Okay? Most people quickly worked out it can't be a because the modulus of z is, the modulus of z is through 2. Okay, so that's out. Uh, most people looked at this and probably thought, eh, that looks weird. I'll just skip that for a second and keep going, right? And then people looked at this. This is the most common, so we call these distractors, right? Mm -hmm. This is the most common one that people thought was the answer, but it wasn't, okay? What does this mean? The imaginary part of z, right? The imaginary part is negative 1. It's the size of the imaginary part, right? i is a number. It's not the actual part that's attached to the number, right? So therefore, the c is c is a distractor. It's a decoy. Okay. Um, arg z is not pi on four. It's well, where is it? It's uh, one minus i. It's minus pi on four. Okay. So then that brings you back to b, which is a bit weird, admittedly. But you can see my solution here. Here is um, here's z squared right here, and then you can see the one and the i squared they cancel, which leaves you with minus two i, right? Which actually doesn't take that much intuition to think about because actually I'll just do it. Here. Okay. Here's 1 minus i, right? Here's 1 minus i. It shouldn't take that much to think, okay, well, if that's pi, the minus pi and 4, right? When you square this guy, that's what brings you down to here, and that's going to be negative 2, right? You can, you can see that the real part is going to be 0, okay? So even though part b looks a bit weird, more people should have picked it than did, okay? Uh, lucky you, you didn't have to do this question because I omitted it, so you dodged a ball on that one. Um, 3, there's, there's not that much to say. Really, you you either understood, okay, this is how I use the conjugate and what it means, um, or you miss up. Like I said, you misunderstood. Like, what does that minus theta? What does that indicate on the argand diagram, right? Uh, and lastly, this question here. Okay, uh, again, this is sneaky. I'll just tell you, this came out of an HSC, right? Uh, what's sneaky about this? It says pi on four and pi on three. So you're thinking, oh, angles. Of course, angles. I'm really good at radians now because I know what radians are. I'm awesome. It's going to be angles. No. Gotcha, right? So, so pi on 4 and pi on 3 are just numbers. We do use them to indicate angles. They're convenient. But it's B because how do I know it's B? Like, I should have actually seen that before I even saw the pi on 4 and pi on 3. It's because it's the modulus, right? So you're looking at distances. You want the distances to be less, sorry, yeah, greater than this, but less than this, right? So that's why you get this kind of shape. By the way, this is called an annulus, this special ring shape or frisbee with a big hole in it. Um, you'll meet these when we do volumes by slicing. But it, it, clearly, as soon as you saw that, like that absolute value, the modulus, you could ignore everything else. Okay, and that's how B was the answer. HSC question. All right, let's move in. Let's move in a little bit. Okay, now I did say um, part A was pretty straightforward, so let me show you my answers. Okay, uh, you calculated the modulus, that was great. You added these two together, that was fantastic. Um, you just had to multiply by the conjugate. Some people multiply by uh, 8 plus 6i by the conjugate of the numerator instead of the denominator, which wouldn't have gotten you very far because you wouldn't have realized anything. Okay? Uh, a large number of people got tripped up by their accuracy here. right? So when they went from here to here, a significant number of people, for instance, um, they did 8 plus 18, so they had a 26. Or in here, you know, their, their numbers didn't work out and so they have 19i left over or something like that. Again, that's an accuracy thing. As an exam technique lesson there, by the way, like you can see this is the warm-up. This is the warm-up question, right? It's like, oh, it's just some arithmetic. But just like in a real actual warm-up, it's really easy to get injured before you're actually warmed up or to get a question wrong before your brain's in gear, okay? So there's a lesson for you. The first question is where the highest concentrations of silly errors always are, every time. Right? People get to the end of the exam and their brain's in gear and they don't get it or they make a mistake because they, they actually don't know how to do the question. But pretty much everyone knows how to do this, right? Come back to it. Doesn't matter if it's extension one or two, regardless of what level. Always come back to early questions. Okay. Part four. Okay, let's look again closer. Right now, this is the way I laid it out. You didn't have to lay it out exactly like this, okay? But for those of you who just didn't know how to find the square root of a complex number, pay attention, okay? You, you say, well, I want the square root of omega, right? So you call that any complex number because the fundamental theorem of algebra tells you that the square root of a complex number is itself also a complex number, okay? So that's where I, I'll just say it's x plus i, y. And then when you square both sides, you can start to get an equation where you can equate the real and imaginary parts, okay? Once you go ahead, you get to here. Now, 
a lot of people got a bit confused at this point because you can see the question says in here, it's so helpful, it's almost close. It says, find the square root of omega given that the real part of the square root of omega is greater than zero. Now, a lot of you took that as a reminder. Oh yeah, I remember when I'm solving this part here, I have to ignore x squared plus one because x and y are real numbers. x plus i, y is a complex number. X and Y are real numbers. So I think a lot of you thought, oh cool, well I've taken care of that real bit, no worries, I've, de I've dealt with that, but actually it really came down here, right? It says, the question says, the real part is positive. The real part is positive, which is why it makes sense to go for X rather than to go for Y, because once you've got the imaginary part, you don't know anything about that. You get the real part and then you say, I only want one of them, right? X is three only since I've got this condition, okay? Uh, once you've got that, you get your negative one. And don't forget, most of you, again, did it pretty well, but a number of you just said, oh, x is this and y is that. Good for you. Do you want a medal? <laughs> like, you know, I want the complex number, right? So tell me the square root of omega. Uh, 